Hi folks, I'm Brett. I put together your clamper and now I'm going to take one apart and show you what's actually going on in there. Um, this is just about everything you're going to need to take it apart and put it back together. Uh, you'll need like a two and a half Allen, a three and a five can help for some adjustment. Um, a little pokey guy and maybe a flat blade screwdriver comes in handy sometimes too. So first thing we're going to do is remove this button head screw, take the actuator arm off. It's held on there with some blue Loctite, so it's going to be a little snug and it might take a little doing. And at this stage, you can change it from long pull to short pull or vice versa. Set that aside for now. Um, the next thing you can do to remove this, uh, this pad adjuster, um, you might want to back this off just a little bit. It'll just help make it easier to pull out. Um, otherwise, the little clicks might make it kind of tough to unthread. Something that can be handy too is as you feel it backing off and getting easy, keep some pressure on this actuator piston. Uh, it just kind of keeps the bearings all in there, you know, keeps it all together. That way things don't come loose on you and kind of go rattling around. So you can pull that off. Um, you've got a roller bearing in here and there's a washer behind it. You can probably just leave them alone. Uh, they get lubed with something, you know, just kind of thin like some tri-flow. A little bit in here will do you. Uh, if you feel the need to take it out, that's where the flat blade might kind of come in handy. You can sort of wedge it in there and pop it up. All right. I've got the actuator piston. Usually if you kind of go counterclockwise with it, you'll leave the bearings in there instead of having them stick to it. These guys get good and greased when they go in. Um, you know, if it all looks nice and fresh, that's what you want it to look like. Now, I guess, next thing to do is you can just kind of see if that'll pop out for you. Bearings might come out individually. And then you've got the whole pistons come out with the spring behind it. So you can lay those out for you to see. The bearings will probably stick in the grease, but sometimes they'll come out for you like that. Um, so that's what you're looking like inside the caliper body. You've got a few steel pins pressed in so that these grooves keep that piston moving, you know, smoothly without wanting to get cocked and keeping it from rotating. Um, you know, that's pretty much the inner workings. These pistons have ramps so that as it rotates, those balls will push down on that pad piston and move your pads in and out. Um, you can remove the pads by removing this screw. It's also got a little blue Loctite on it just to make sure that it doesn't come out on you accidentally. And the pads will just push out the bottom. Grab them like that. And then on the other side, you have another adjuster. It's got the same little kind of uh, ball plunger screw on this side. Um, you'll feel the clicks as you rotate it, so that just kind of helps you, you know, adjust it in fine increments. Um, you can see it move in and out. Not much of a need to pull it out, but we can. And a five millimeter Allen is handy for that. You can just kind of thread it all the way out. And there is basically your bare caliper. You have two screws on this side that hold the two halves together. They shouldn't ever really need to be removed. They're torqued down pretty hefty. So, you know, that way we make sure it all stays together for you good and tight. Um, you know, this is kind of kind of what you're working with at its most stripped down. All right, now that we've got it pretty much disassembled and nice and empty down in there, um, we can start by putting this backing plate pad adjuster back on. Since this is fresh, it's good and greasy, but just to show you, we'll put a little more grease in there. Make sure these threads feel nice and smooth. So get it started, you can kind of do a little of the peanut butter jar thing to make sure that they grab each other. You know, thread it backwards and then feel when they catch and go forward. Again, the five is just kind of a little easier than using your hands to do these many turns. Um, 
good starting point is to just kind of eyeball it flush with this backing plate. Um, you can do the adjustments once you get it on the bike. Uh, with the little ball plunger screw here, uh, something to note is that if you want to change the feel of it, a little bit of adjustment goes a long ways for you. Even just like a little eighth of a turn or sometimes even a sixteenth can go between, you know, it has a little bit of a shaky feel to it. So then you can snug it back down just a hair and it feels nice and solid now. Um, so just make those adjustments a little bit at a time. Now we're going to go back to the other side here. Um, you can go ahead and get a lot of grease inside the caliper body. Use a little brush. Got some clear grease so it doesn't stain things up. But you know, just your normal, your normal bike grease will do just fine. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to drop the spring in there. I like to get a little more grease on it, and if for no other reason, it helps me just kind of make sure it's in there nice and flat. I can push on it with this. Next step is going to be to drop the pad piston in. Uh, you see that it's got little detents in it. Those are going to line up with those uh, those steel pins that we've pressed in to keep it all aligned. So you just kind of drop it in there. You can put the ball bearings in before or after. Um, they're already in here, so that's the way they're going to go. Uh, but typically, I'll put them in uh, after I've dropped that piston in, and then I can get it good and greased, and then I'll drop the bearings in on top of that grease, because once they're already in there, they can be a little fiddly and you can knock them around. But make sure you get those ramps good and greased and the ball bearings too. Um, little tip when you are dropping the bearings in, since there's this recess, just put a Q-tip in there. Uh, it helps keep those from falling down in and can save you some frustration of having to dig them all back out. Um, now that you've got those together, uh, we've already got our washer and roller bearing in here. So, we can go and just show you that again real quick. There's just a washer dropped into this adjuster, and then the needle bearing is going to push in on top of it. Um, some of them do fit more snugly than others, so if yours is one that does, I'd suggest dropping this actuator piston in and using it to push the needle bearing in fully. That way you make sure it goes in nice and flat, feels good and smooth for you. Um, as with, with everything else in there so far, make sure you get a good layer of grease on here just so it keeps everything nice and smooth and free. And once you've got that, this is only going to go in one orientation that works correctly. Um, you're kind of going to just have to eyeball it. <laughs> Um, if you don't get it on the first try, well, you'll just have to try it again. But this is the direction that you want the actuator arm or the actuator piston to face so that when you put the arm on, it's in the correct spot. Uh, it's kind of going to point towards your barrel adjuster over here. Um, as when I took it apart, I'm going to kind of keep some pressure on it with my finger just so it keeps things from getting knocked around in there. It'll keep it all, you know, nice and tight. You'll start to feel it when it starts to catch the spring and put some pressure on it and you can let it go. Um, and now that it's all greasy and my hands are too, I'm going to grab a rag just because it helps me grab it. Um, I like to thread it down all the way just to make sure that the threads feel good and clean and uh, you know that everything's nice and lined up in there, that that roller bearing is nice and flat, um, things are feeling good, it's bottomed out. So now at this point, I'm going to back it back out and just kind of like we did with the other adjuster, for starters I'm just going to sort of eyeball it flush and then you can adjust it where you need it once you get it on the bike. Um, another thing that the Q-tip can be handy for is getting rid of a lot of this excess grease. You can just kind of wipe that off. Um, sort of same thing here as on the other side you've got a little ball plunger that's going to fit into some of those detents on the adjuster. Um, you know, and a little goes a long way. Once you feel it kind of bottom out, chances are you're already a little too tight. See how it binds up on me? So just back it out little by little until you can kind of feel the clicks, but it also threads in and out nice and smooth. Uh, 
that's feeling pretty all right to me. So then the last step is to get your actuator arm back on. Put a little bit of thread lock on this. We use some blue Loctite just because you definitely want to make sure that that piece doesn't fall off on you. So just a little dab will do. You can put the actuator arm back on. You can put the washer on. And drop the screw in. Take three millimeter Allen. Thread it back down nice and snug. Give it a good little little extra tug there to make sure it's good and on. Uh, and then go ahead and check to see how it feels. It's feeling nice and smooth. It's doing just like it should. Uh, these adjusters will adjust your pads in or out. Um, we'll go ahead and get them back in there now. They'll slide in from the bottom just like that. Make sure you get that screw in there so that they don't go anywhere. There's a little blue Loctite already on the screw, so you should be good to go there. Get it nice and snug. And now go mount it on your bike. Tune it all up, go for a ride.